six persons. Four. Hey Noel, welcome. Welcome to everybody on Instagram. Thank you guys for tuning in. Just let me know if you can see me. Can you show up? I'm Sisa. Hi Sisa, I'm early. My internet is working good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining my sister. Welcome everyone. Cheryl Jenkins says hi. Hi Cheryl. Welcome. 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 Alright guys. My name is Chef Walker Barrett and welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to dinners from around the world. So of course my cooking is inspired by my travels and of course whatever i see in the market or in the store so i want to welcome everyone today today's dinner is basically whatever was in my cupboard all right so we'll be making a dessert and the dessert is blueberry and sorrel pie so i want to start with that one first in this pot, I have two cups, I'm sorry, I have um, two tablespoons of butter and I'm going to be adding two tablespoons of flour. Now this is a process, whenever you add flour to a melted butter, you are now making a roux, alright? A roux is used as a thickener, mostly in sauces. So I'm using a root tonight to thicken the filling for my pie. So just let me know where you're watching from so I can give you a shout out. Also, share the live. All right, guys. And for those who are new, I want to extend a special welcome to you and tell you a little bit about my YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is called Next in Food, and that's where I basically post the dishes that I like to make for my family. So in this pot, I have two tablespoons of melted butter and two tablespoons of flour, all-purpose flour. All right, I think I'm just going to add some more because I'm using frozen blueberries, and blueberries naturally have a lot of liquid in them so the roux is acting as a thickener for my pie this evening Latoya Roux, good evening chef and family good evening Latoya, welcome Louise Erwin Jackson Walker, good evening family, I'm watching good evening my mother, welcome, welcome, welcome Angelica right. Willie, hi, I'm home today. I miss watching on Sundays, but I don't have to work. Hey, Angelica. So in here, I'm going to add two cups of sorrel and two cups of frozen blueberries. Okay, I'm also adding one cup of sugar. And I'm just mixing that around. So again, the purpose of the roux is just to thicken up the filling for the pie. We're not going to do a very long cook for the filling because it's going to be baking in the oven. All right, I'm also adding in some ginger, a tablespoon of grated ginger. And we mix and mix. All right, so this is our pie filling. I also want to add 
a little bit of freshly squeezed sour orange. Sour orange is in season and I absolutely love it. And also, even though I made a roux, I want to also add a, some cornstarch to this to just thicken up all of that extra liquid that might be lingering into the frozen blueberry and frozen sorrel. And also, the cornstarch is going to give it a lovely, 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 lovely little sheen that I like. So in goes Claire Ryan, watching from England. I look forward to the Sunday evening demonstrations. Thank you so much for joining. Daniel Brown, hi, I'm watching. This here is just a little bit of rum. Some of the cornstarch went in inside. And so we're just gonna cook this until it is thickened. Let me turn the fire up. This is going to happen real fast. Let me get all the cornstarch in. So while I wait on this to get a little thicker, I just want to say thanks to everybody who followed the food yesterday to Street Food Saturdays in Mount James. We really, really appreciate your business and thanks for understanding our COVID procedures and thank you for being patient with us. Also, I want to use this opportunity to tell our new customers what Street Food Saturdays is all about. Now, Street Food Saturdays, we do what we call culinary community tourism, and the product that we offer is food. We do not offer fine dining, so don't get it twisted. We offer food. So if you love food like us, we just want to offer food to you. We don't have waiters and waitresses. The service style is very casual. The environment is rustic. You are supposed to purchase whatever you like from the menu and you pick it up at the stations. However, if you're having a challenge, uh, our host is happy to help you, but do not expect us to serve you like a waiter would in a fine dining restaurant. All right, guys? It's very, very casual and we want to keep it just like that. So. With that out the way, look at this. Our filling is nice and thick, and this is what I want. And so I'm gonna just turn this off. Angelica, will you tell me how to prepare the sorrel? The sorrel was, this is raw, fresh sorrel. It was frozen, Angelica. So usually when I go to the market and I buy sorrel, I just rinse it and put it in my freezer all right so i can have it whenever i want so and the freezer the freezing of the sorrel softens it so it allows it to make a beautiful beautiful filling for your pie patricia brown good evening family so i'm just going to let our sorrel and blueberry filling hang out right here just to cool off just a little bit i'm going to take my stove out the way and we are going to go now to another dish turn my oven on serena and to serena what is hi i am right hi serena welcome welcome so for dish number two we will be making a biscuit and this is a coconut biscuit A biscuit is like a quick bread and for my biscuit today we're using these ingredients coconut so this is freshly grated coconut this is butter I love baking with butter versus margarine because butter adds so much flavor and this is cheddar cheese mixed in with a little bit of provolone so it's mostly cheddar so I'm making a cheddar coconut biscuit and in my container here, I already have two cups of flour and a tablespoon of baking powder. I am adding just a little bit of salt to taste. 
and then in goes the butter. Now let me tell you what I did with the butter. I put it in the freezer and just shred it on the coarse shred side of my grater just to make it easy. All right, so you guys can do that little trick. Just put the butter in the freezer and then you just shred it and you get it in small pieces. I'm also going to add about a tablespoon of it to my filling for our pie, all right? And then in goes my whisk. I'm using my whisk like a pastry blender. Just put it in there and just kind of mix everything up. The idea is that the butter goes in to the oven while it is still cold and then it will melt and give the product a nice flaky texture. So we want nice flaky biscuits. So in goes our butter. And in this container again, I have two cups of flour, and six ounces of cold butter, a tablespoon of baking powder, a little bit of salt to taste, and two tablespoons of white sugar. Okay, so I'm gonna go in now with a fork and just get it mixed up. Then I'm gonna add my coconut. This is one cup of freshly grated coconut, and that too is gonna get mixed in. And this is one and a half cup of cheddar cheese. I'm just gonna start with one cup first. Mostly cheddar mixed with a little bit of provolone that I found in the fridge. All right, so let me just pause and go back to our blueberry and sorrel filling. So I added a tablespoon of melted butter and you see what happens? it just automatically gives it a nice sheen all right so here we go patricia patricia brown watching from Poughkeepsie, new york hello my sis welcome carry on hardy hi sis hey sis welcome trudy so, Riley. hey diva chef hey trudy all right guys so we are making our coconut cheddar biscuits so now i'm adding in yogurt half cup of yogurt this could have been milk i'm only adding yogurt because i have too much of it in my fridge and i want to use it up and now i'm adding in about a half cup of water a biscuit dough is supposed to be thick and by the way there's no eggs in this biscuit so you just added a little bit of water at a time just because I'm adding yogurt, I'm not adding any extra milk, okay? But if you like, if you don't have yogurt and you want to make this, you could use milk. So we want the dough to be nice and just come together like what's happening here. Don't want it to be soft, so I think we're good. All right, and now I'm going to add the remaining cheese. See that all right so now it's time to drop all the biscuits and this is our pie dough I it was in the freezer I'm just gonna take put it back until we're ready Alright guys, just focus on the food while. Three workers. Hey, hello everyone, Zach in the house. Hi Zachary. cheddar biscuit is ready to go into the oven so I have my pan here for easy cleanup I like to line my um, pan and I'm using a two ounce spoon and I'm gonna put like three biscuits in a row that how facebook people can you see 
make sure that they can see what's going on. So again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, sharing your Sunday with me in my kitchen as I make dinner for my family. And we have nine biscuits comfortably on this tray. And this is going to go into a 375 oven and this will be between 15 and 20 minutes. So take a look, Facebook people, take a look, Instagram people. Biscuits are in. The leftovers, I'm just going to stuck it in the fridge. Dwayne, could you put this in the fridge for me, please? Put it in the fridge around the back. All right, now, guys, so back to our pie. So, our pie filling is ready. For those who are just joining, it's a blueberry and sorrel that we use to make the filling. I went ahead and I made the pie crust. And so we're gonna talk about the pie crust, how it is done. Now I have a tutorial on my channel on how to make short crust pastry. Um, I did that when we made um, planting tart and gizardo. So there are many types of pastry. A short crust pastry is uses a ratio of what we call half fat to flour. So what that means is that for this pie, I use eight ounces of all purpose flour and four ounces of cold butter with a little bit of salt and quarter cup of sugar. I like my pie crust with a little bit of sugar in it. Now, if the blueberries were fresh there, I could have just, just put the sugar, the flour, the butter, and the sorrel, and just cook it like that. But I chose to cook the filling before. Now, I wanna make a little lattice on top. So what I do, I put one in the middle like this, and one, nothing fancy. I only rolled out five pieces. Then you're gonna peel back every other one, just like this, and take some of the flour off. And then you put this here. I really should have made seven strips, but I only made five, so it's, it's going to have to work. All right? And that's what that is. My kitchen is so hot, these things have to go into the oven real quick. And so I'm just going to make sure that it is attached. And then I take a knife and cut the extra pieces off, just like that. So you see how simple that is? Just cut it off. Ooh. And then this is going to also go into the oven. But before I put it in the oven, I like to just brush the top with a little bit of milk. You, milk or egg wash is fine for brushing the top of the pie. Brushing the dough, really. And then I sprinkle on just some white sugar. So the egg wash or the milk allows the sugar to stick. And the sugar gives it a nice little crunch. And this is our pie. And this goes into our oven. And this is going to bake for about 30 to 40 minutes. So dessert is in. Time to clean up. So again, welcome. Share the live. Let me know where you're watching from, guys. Let me know where you are watching from. Trudy, Trudy and Riley, yep, you are seeing. Owen, hey. Owen Sylvester, remember me, chef. Hey, Dwight, thank you so much for tuning in. Alright, 
so now it's time for us to make our entree. And we're making a simple entree tonight. We're making Kalalu linguini. So I have my pot ready. Impressive 85 is watching from Chicago. Chicago. Sorry. Who's that? Empress, impressive 85. Thanks for watching. So we want to say hi. Serena Wallace is watching from Mount James. Hi, Serena. Thank you too for watching. All right, so. We are going to now start our linguine. Chef Move is watching from Miami. Thank you, Chef Move. So guys, this is linguine. Linguine is a type of pasta. It is what we call a ribbon shaped pasta because it is flat, all right? So when I make these types of pasta, ribbon pastas, I, I like to just keep them in a very light sauce. So a nice light sauce. So we're going to be making our sauteed shrimp and then the sauce is going to be made up in the pot. So let me just show you how it is done. But first, I forgot my wine. So let me just run to my cupboard and get some wine. Impressive 85, love how you educate us while cooking, Chef. Thank you. So, we're doing linguine, and so linguine is a type of pasta, and usually pastas are named based on the family that makes it. So it usually takes the name of the person that makes it, and since it's an Italian product, you notice almost all pastas um, end with a vowel. It is said that all Italian names end with a vowel. I didn't fact check it, so I don't even know if it is true, but I'm just sharing. So in this pot, this is garlic oil and all of this stuff right here, this is roasted garlic. What I did was just to put it into the oven. I put, this was two heads of garlic. I put it into the oven with some foil, in some foil and I roasted and then I mashed it and add a little bit of oil onto it. So our oil is in the pot. We want the pot very nice and very, 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 very hot because the shrimp that we're adding in is cold. And so if the pot is not hot enough, when you add cold stuff to it, it's going to lower the temperature. So basically what I'm saying is I want the pot hotter than I need it to be. Okay, so if the shrimp is supposed to be cooked at say 375, you want to get the pot as hot as 430 degrees Fahrenheit so that when you add the, the meat, in this case the shrimp, the, the temperature will go right back down to where you really want it, which is 375. Okay, so while we're waiting on that, this is Kalalu. Kalalu is one of my favorite go-to Jamaican ingredients. It is inexpensive and it is versatile and it is always in season. So what I did was to blanch the kalalu and then I chop it up real fine with my knife. And by the way, to blanch means to, in this case, to set the color. So how do we blanch? You bring a pot of water up to a boil, make sure you have a container with ice cold water ready, and then you put the product in the boiling water. In the case of kalalu, you count to 10, you count to 10 and you remove it, put it into the cold water, and then that stops the cooking because blanching is just a technique. It's not a cooking method. So after you blanch something, you have to cook it, all right? Shante, I'm here because I want to cook these fancy meals for my future husband. <laughs> hey, Shante, thank you for stopping in. Okay, so I have 
you know, one of those supermarket package of shrimp. I Sheila, you need to step back a little bit. I don't want to burn you. We're almost there. I don't think my pot is hot enough, so I'm not going to chance it. Let's just wait. Get it hot. Now, shrimp cooks quickly and it overcooks even quicker. All right? So always remember that shrimp cooks very, very, very quickly and it overcooks even faster than it cooks. So you want to bear that in mind. I have some dry thyme. I'm just going to take it off the branch, put it directly on my pasta. Any question, guys? So for those who are just joining, welcome, welcome, welcome. And for those that passed through Street Food Saturdays yesterday, I also want to say thank you for following the food. And as I like to say, Street Food Saturdays is an experience. Okay, guys? So, thank you for following the food to Mount James to Street Food Saturdays. I think it's time to add our shrimp. So here it goes. Let's test it. Oh man, the sizzle is not as big as it needs to be. I want to hear that big, loud sizzle. So we are going to wait, wait a little bit more. Patience, patience, patience. So let's look at our other ingredients. Uh, we're gonna be adding some Parmesan cheese. I love to use fresh parm. I don't like that powder stuff in the bottle. It has too much fillers. This is chili garlic paste. So this dish has a real strong garlicky background to it. And then in this container, I have, oh, my brush is in it. Let me take my brush out. This is coconut milk, all right? This is one cup of freshly squeezed coconut milk. And when I made the pasta, I saved some of the pasta water. It's very important to save the pasta water or some of it if you are not going to be cooking the pasta um, right away. So I cook the pasta ahead of time and I save some of the water because that's where the starch is. And the starches in the pasta water helps to keep everything together. So my pot is smoking, so I know it's ready. So here goes, hear that? That is what I want you to hear, that big, nice sizzle, all right? So these are medium shrimp. When it comes out to shrimp, use whatever size you like. And then we're just gonna leave it alone after I make sure that everything is cut in the bottom of the pan. Just leave it alone so that it stares on one side. And then I knew I was doing two pounds of shrimp. Uh, so I knew I needed a big pot. So you want to make sure that the pot is big enough to cook whatever it is you're cooking. Just checking on my, checking in on my dish dish. And they're popping up nicely. The pie is baking. So good stuff, good stuff is happening. Don't be tempted to turn the shrimp too fast. Give a little peek. You want to get a nice stare on each side before you stir it around, all right? So to stir means to brown, all right? And usually that is, if, if we're going very scientific, that is the Millard reaction when protein brown and get a nice, you know, nice brown color. And you know, us Jamaicans, we don't like stuff white. We like our food with color. 
and we love our food with even more flavor. So let's see. Look at that. That's what we want. You see that nice brown crust right there? For those on um, Facebook, you see that? That's what you want to see. See that nice brown crust? That is flavor right there. Right? So now is a good time to move it around. Let's move it around. So now when you're cooking, it's good to move the food around, especially if you're sauteing. Saute means to jump. And that is why when you see some chefs cooking, they're moving up the food. You move the food around, it cooks better. It cooks more evenly when you move it around. So if you can't do that, you move it around with, a, with your spoon. Because my pot is a non-stick pot, I like to use a wooden utensil in the non-stick pot to not destroy the non-stick coating in my pot. Very important. So at this point, I'm going to deglaze my shrimp and I'm going to add some wine just to take the edge off. I'm using rice wine because I love this stuff and that's all there is. So this is almost ready to come out. We're going to take it out and make the sauce directly into the pot. So you see this little burnt bits in the pan. This is called, this stuff right here is called the fond, F-O-N-D. And this means flavor. So in here, I'm going to add my garlic butter. My, my garlic, my roasted garlic, actually. So roasted garlic goes in and butter goes in. Okay. And we're making the sauce directly in the pan, roasted garlic goes in, and my chili garlic paste goes in. I love the fermented flavor of the chili garlic paste, so I always use it. Now if you don't have chili garlic paste, any pepper that you like is just fine. And I'm going to add some more wine just to take up all of that fun, that you know, all of that flavor from the bottom. And then remember, I told you I was making shrimp halaloo, right? So the coconut milk goes in. And we're cooking the sauce directly into the pan. So whenever you're making shrimp, you want to start, you want to cook the shrimp halfway, like I just did. So you want to saute it, remove it, and then make your sauce in the pan. Do not make the sauce directly on the shrimp because you run the risk of overcooking the shrimp. And this is our pasta water I'm adding in. Remember I told you I like to save some of the pasta water because the pasta is starch and all a lot of starch is in the pasta water and it helps to thicken up the sauce. So this is our sauce. I'm going to give it a taste. Now is a good time. 
think it needs all the pasta water that I have. I'm just going to add it in and allow this sauce to just simmer down, come together. You must be patient when you're cooking. No rush because cooking comes in different stages. You're developing the flavor. So the first thing we did, we put our pot on, we put our oil in and we allow the pot and the oil to come up to temperature. Then we saute, we added the shrimp and sauteed the shrimp halfway. We did that because we are going to let the shrimp continue cooking in the sauce. So you don't want to fully cook the shrimp in the sauteing process. You only want to cook it halfway. It's not fully cooked. Remember I said that shrimp cooks quickly and it overcooks even faster than how it cooks. Okay, so now we're making our sauce and our sauce is made with coconut milk, roasted garlic, chili garlic paste, and of course it has some wine. And I'm going to add some sour orange juice in just to add some more flavor. So for those who don't know what a sour orange is, this is what it looks like. Uh, so it is sour because it's not a sweet orange and it has a totally different vibe from the sweet orange. So it's not like a sweet orange that was meant to be sweet and no, it, it didn't. This is really sour orange, all right? And it makes beautiful, what we call here in Jamaica, lemonade or wash. And it makes beautiful sauces. It makes beautiful salad dressing. So I'm gonna squeeze that in close to the end. So now we're just reducing down our sauce and making sure that all the flavors come together nicely. So guys, talk to me. Do you have any questions? Okay, I'm checking on our stuff in the oven. Hi. Colleen says, Chef, I have a question. Go ahead. Go ahead with your question. Okay, guys. So I think my sauce is where I want it to be. So I'm going to reserve about a half cup. And this is just going to pour over my pasta again. And then now in goes. Colleen's question, can you please save some for me? Is that Colleen Powell? Yes, it is. So our Callaloo is now in the mix. And we're going to let this come back up to a nice simmer. So remember I told you that the Callaloo was just blanched and chopped. It's not cooked. It's very important to cook it. So for those chefs out there that when you go to the fine dine restaurant that like to serve you blanched vegetables in the name of color, blanching is not cooking. Blanching is a technique. So after you blanch the carrots, the broccoli, the cauliflower, you must cook it. You must cook it by whatever other means you want to present it on the plate but just don't just blanch the vegetable and throw it on the plate especially for those chefs that like to serve string beans and carrot as the only vegetables so yes i had to get that in so we're cooking our callaloo and it doesn't take long to cook because it is a vegetable Okay, now it's time to add the shrimp.
Now, I was first introduced to Kalalu. Kalalu is a Caribbean dish, um, African dish. A friend of mine, when I was going to culinary school, she was from Barbados, and she always talked about Kalalu. Kalalu, you know, and so what I knew Kalalu to be as a Jamaican was very different from what she knew Kalalu as. So we were talking, and she told me that Kalalu was actually a dish and and it is and they make it with the young leaf of the dasheen or coca plant or some other bush um, that they have there in barbados and so she makes a wicked 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 crab kalalu or shrimp kalalu or she makes a soup that has pigtail and shrimp and crab and we call and she calls it um kalalu soup so I, it just leave a good impression on me. I absolutely love it. So this is what the shrimp kalalu looks like. So this is the finished shrimp kalalu. Just like two more minutes to go. It, it is cooked in coconut milk with chilies and spices, whatever spice you like. And then the kalalu is blanched and chopped up really fine and added to it. And you see what's happening? The kalalu is coating the shrimp. So this is why it's called shrimp kalalu linguine. So now guys, I am gonna take some of the shrimp out just to put on top of the dish, you know, just for my functional garnish. So you take some out. So if you want me to cook this at Street Food Saturdays, you let me know. We did we did crab kalalu before, but we've never done shrimp kalalu. So our linguine is going in. So in the party, in goes the linguine. Evans asks, where is the cheese? Oh, this is not really a cheesy dish. This is a Caribbean vibe. But I have cheese, so the cheese is just gonna finish it. So it's not one of those Italian cheesy dishes. And by the way, my family love cheese, but I don't. I really can't digest cheese, all right? So I saved some other pasta water. So you see why the pasta water is important? Because pasta is starch and it will suck up all of the liquid so when you boil the pasta do not throw away all of the the water lady loins can conch be used as well chef yes conch can be used conch is awesome but not for now not until next year remember that conch is banned it is illegal to harvest conch right now so this is my Parmesan cheese and the Parmesan cheese tonight is just for that umami flavor that it brings to the party. So this is not a cheese sauce. Um, Sachel, please cook it. You shouldn't even ask us that. So we're going to let that stay in there and get happy while I check on our biscuit that should be ready. Louise Erman Jackson, looking so delicious. Hello, Mother. Our biscuits are ready. Look at that. So you, they kind of look like wrap buns, right? For those over there on Facebook, this is what our biscuits look like. These are our coconut cheddar biscuit. I just want something to put it on. Satchel. We love everything that you prepare. Oh, thank you, Sashel. All right, so our linguine, our shrimp kalalu linguine is ready. It needs one last ingredient, and that is our sour orange. So I am putting the juice of half of a sour orange in. If you don't have sour orange where you live, no worries. You can use lemon. 
or you can just leave it out. Absolutely no worries. Just mix it in. And what I love about the sour orange, it has a nice, it just have a vibe. It's, it's, you know, it's just so unique. So this is done. We're going to turn it off. And it is time to plate our shrimp callaloo linguine. So guys, let me just clear the way. And so we are gonna have this with biscuit. So that's where the cheese went. The cheese for tonight's dinner went into the biscuit because my family they love cheese so next time you see callaloo show callaloo some love so we have used callaloo in so many different ways on this live already we made a callaloo pesto remember that we also made what else did we make with callaloo? We made callaloo pesto. And I'm sure we made a few other things. So this is what I like to do. So I take out some of the shrimp just to put it on top. See that? Because you want your guests to see the shrimp. And of course, my guest is my family. So you want them to get lots of shrimp. And then I save some extra sauce. And when I do that, I just put it to the side because the pasta can take the sauce. Okay. So this is our shrimp callaloo linguine. So callaloo is the star, and the linguine is the starch. Linguine is just the type of pasta that was used. And for those who ask about cheese, this is when we now add some cheese. So let us put our callaloo, shrimp callaloo linguine in center stage and just shower down some cheese. See that? Not too much to make it overpowering, but just enough to add some flavor. And that's it. If, if the kids and my husband want more cheese, they'll just add it themselves. So take a look. Where's Chelsea? Looking really good. Thank you, Chelsea. So now it's time to serve our biscuits. Kenisha Walker, that new biscuit is super delicious, sis. Yes, my sis, you should make this. It's very, very simple. So guys, that's just coconut milk, callaloo. And by the way, that was one bundle of callaloo. Evans, outstanding. Thank you so much. All right, guys, so I totally forget to spray my foil for my biscuit. So they just have to be left like this. They're a little bit too hot. So this is what the biscuits look like. These are our coconut cheddar biscuit. They're light and airy. You can see the cheese. So right now, we are only waiting on our dessert. So while we wait on our dessert, I am just reminding you guys to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's called Dexting Food. This is what it looks like. So you just go into YouTube and type in Dexting Food. 
hit that little subscription button leave a comment in the comment box we like to connect and talk with you and these dishes will eventually be placed on the channel Jacoby Paul Muchisos hi Jacoby my, my husband wanted me to have this dinner ready in half an hour but you know guys the pie we need dessert we love dessert sundays are our cheat day sundays when we have a proper family meal and so i am now taking the opportunity to share that with you and so the dessert today is drum roll blueberry blueberry sorrel pie all right and you can make a pie with whatever fruit you like we don't eat a lot of pies in jamaica but pies are you know nutritious and easy to make and almost spoil proof the beauty is that however you make food your family will still love you and eat it so that's a plus let me just go and check on the pie again and it's getting nice and golden brown the thing about the pie you want to make sure that the crust is baked if the crust is not baked then it's going to ruin the pie how much time do we have remaining i'm just going to try to take the biscuit off i should have greased the pan I should have, I should have, I should have. Evan, madman done. All right, so the biscuits have to stay because they're not coming off. I have some extra biscuits, so I'm going to just get them ready to put into the oven to bake. What is Evan saying? Madman done. What, what, does, what does that mean, Evelyn? Colleen, can we see the beautiful chef? Can you see what? The beautiful chef. Oh. Sure, Colleen. You'll see me when I'm ending the live. Right now, you're going to see the food only, Miss Colleen. Right, so that's our first set of biscuits. Between the other set, and this time we're going to make sure we grease the foil so that the biscuit doesn't stick. Evans, food looks so delicious. Thank you, guys. So I just put a little bit of vegetable oil on the foil. To bake my last set of biscuit. Let me tell you a little trick when you're making biscuit too. You you after you mix it up, you can put it in your freezer to chill. So you put it on the tray like this, and then put it into your freezer because the freezer is the coldest part of the fridge, and just let it stay in there for 20 minutes, and then you take it from the freezer and put it into your oven. And I use two types of cheese this evening. You can use whatever cheese you like. So that's the beauty about cooking. Once you understand the basic, so the cheese is just a frill in the biscuit, just to add some flavor. So whatever cheese you have, feel free to use it. Two more minutes and we're going to take our pie out. We just get something to put 
put it on for you to see. And dinner is served. The honcho, I'm late, look, looking delicious. Biscuit is done. Welcome, even though you're late. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Jimita Bennett, I'm not a linguine fanatic, but I definitely enjoy this dish. Your Florentine dishes are off, just always scrumptious. Thank you. Shante, where can we get this recipe? This recipe, like all the other recipes, will be posted eventually on the channel. And our pie is ready. See that? So remember I, sh I told you I added, we brushed the top with milk and then added some sugar. You can see that little sugar crust that I like. These are the brown bits. Our filling is nice and soft. Brown coffee looks amazing. Thank you. And as I said, you know, I really needed another strip here, but that's fine. Let's just, let me show you what the filling looks like. You see that? So as it cools down, it's just going to hold its shape. Let me tell you, blueberry with sorrel and a tubs of ginger. Absolutely, absolutely awesome. I am lifting my spoon. Yeah, I love my pies hot. Pies and ice cream. Mm, mm, mm. So, guys, that's all there is to dinner tonight. Shrimp callaloo linguine, blueberry sorrel pie, and cheddar coconut biscuit. This is dinner. Thank you for watching. We are going to enjoy our dinner. Please remember to share the live before you get off. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Next in Food. We will be posting all the recipes that we have been doing. It takes a little while to post recipes after, you know, the editing is the prop is, is the thing that takes the longest. But we will eventually get there. We want to thank you so much for tuning in, for stopping by, and for sharing your Sunday with us. I am your diva chef, Simone Walker Barrett. So bye to you guys on Facebook and on Instagram. Thank you guys so much and you take care. Shanice? Yes, Shanice. The sorry, sorry, florets cook all the way out. Oh yes, yes. All the way out. Sorrel is a is a plant. So these things does not take long to cook. Uh, what I like to do is to freeze the sorrel and if it was fresh, I would just chop it very fine. And as soon as you had eat to it, it extracts all the liquid and then it softens the fibers of the sorrel. So yes, it's very cooked. Can Jacob. you show a super solid dinner, chef? Jacob. Yeah. Thank you, my sister. Jacob, this is... Enjoy for me and you. I will, my mother. Thank you for watching as always. What Jacoby wants. Jacoby no. says later. Bless Chelsea says bye, Chef. Bye. Later, Jacoby. Take care, everyone. I'll see you next week, God's willing. Have a good one.